Hi everybody. You know, I find it thrilling to capture an image that shows the beauty and amazing biological diversity of the underwater world. And then to take this image topside and show it to your friends, family, and fellow divers, just a blast. I don't think I'll ever get bored with underwater photography. There are so many diverse subjects to photograph and so many different types of photography. Wide angle, close focus wide angle, split levels, macro, super macro, the list goes on and on. However, one thing I've learned is there are many potential pitfalls and mistakes to be made. And believe me, over my photography career, I've probably made almost all of them, if not all of them. My main goal in setting up this channel is to help my fellow divers avoid some of the mistakes I've made and maybe give them some tips from what I've learned. Now, I'm not a professional. This is just my opinion. There are many other ways to do things. It's always good to keep an open mind. <clears throat> What I have learned is that there are three main obstacles to successful underwater photography. Now, one of them is equipment. You can get great images with fairly simple equipment, but even then, you need to have some equipment. You need a camera and a housing at the minimum, and most photographers will eventually want to get a strobe at some point. It's easy to accumulate more and more equipment. I took this snapshot of our bed while on a dive trip a few years ago. It looks pretty daunting. Not only this, the equipment must be packed, transported, and protected while underwater. Also, you need to know your equipment cold and be really familiar with your camera setup and all the controls before entering the water. Now, the second thing after equipment is you, like I took a picture of this fish, where's all the beautiful colors, okay? Well, you have to understand how the water column takes away color, contrast, and clarity. All right. You also must deal with issues with a possible moving subject and moving camera from current and surge. And if you use a strobe to restore color and clarity, then you have to deal with syncing your strobe with the camera. You have to deal with backscatter, un unwanted harsh shadows, and maybe too little or too much strobe power. Finally, after equipment and after the water column, we have to understand that time underwater is limited. All right, we have precious little time to be underwater, and during this time, we have to monitor our dive parameters, our navigation, find out where our dive buddy is. Then we have to find a suitable subject to photograph, slowly approach the subject without scaring it away, set our camera parameters, compose our subject, and finally take pictures, all while not harming the animal or the reef and still being respectful of other photographers and other dive buddies and watching your buddy and not getting lost. So many things can go wrong. This is not even a complete list of all the equipment I've ruined or flooded over the years. I've made many mistakes and missed many opportunities to create good images, but I've learned a lot from my mistake and I've, and I've created this channel to help my fellow divers by showing some of my mistakes and demonstrating some of the things I've learned. Now, some of my videos are quite basic and some are fairly advanced. I'll try to discuss equipment, techniques, types of underwater photography, composition, lighting techniques, and even so show some cool things about life and biology in the underwater world. Now, one final thing. Um, I've learned that underwater photography equipment can be quite expensive and big bulk SLR camera setups with special lenses and strobes can produce amazing image, images, okay? But you can also get absolutely fantastic images with a simple compact camera. Now, I took this image, it's a close focus wide angle a few years ago with available light, a simple compact camera and no strobe or flash. This is a forced perspective. It makes the near subject, the scorpion fish, look huge, much larger than the more distant diver, my dive buddy. I love this image, okay? And this is still one of my all-time favorite images, taken with an inexpensive, compact 5 megapixel camera and a single strobe way back in 2005. All right? In my opinion, knowledge, patience, effort, and skills at composition are much more important than how expensive or how big your camera setup is. I've organized my videos into various categories by playlists. There's some overlap, but it should be pretty easy to navigate, pretty self-explanatory. Also, I welcome any comments or suggestions or feedback. I try to answer any questions, though sometimes I don't know the answer, and I've actually learned a lot from communicating with you as well. Well, thank you very much for your interest in this channel, and good luck with your photography.